Okay. Now this is a fine blend of hypnotic and Hennessy <laughs> served over ice. <laughs> Once you take this down, every cigar you will have will taste like a, a Padron 80. I don't think I've heard or seen hypnotic in 20 years. <laughs> Bro, I see it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here in the studio once again with myself, Mark Nikolai is here, of course, Jared Burroughs, and Zach Nikolai. We are all here smoking some cigars that we picked up. And we're going to be talking to some people that are involved in the creation or the maybe rebranding. We'll get more into that. Uh, but real quick, I'm going to start off with what we're smoking. Jared and I are lighting up the Sancho Panza Extra Fuerte. And Mark has the Maduro. Double Maduro. The double Maduro. Zach can't read, so I'll read it for him. He has the Extra Cheeto. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to pronounce it wrong, and then you guys get on. Top I don't know. Of I still probably could have, but we'll see. So I'm going to introduce our guests. We have two guests today. One of them is from Scandinavian Tobacco Group. Correct me if I'm wrong for getting for that, but I'm going to go ahead and introduce Justin first. How's it going, brother? What's going on, guys? Welcome, brother. Thanks for having me. Of course. What are we smoking? I'm smoking the Sancho Panza Double Maduro. Very nice, very nice. And we have another guest that some of you may recognize. His face is out there in the cigar community. We have Matt Booth with us as well. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, fellows. Absolutely. My privilege. What are we My smoking? Pleasure. Me tonight? Yes. This conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so no cigar tonight. Not tonight, man. I'm I'm fresh out. I traveled yesterday and I didn't have a chance to to re up my supplies. So I am I am Sans Plant Lab. I, I, I wish we knew we would have overnighted some cigars to you. You know, we can't have you not smoking. <laughs> I'm a mess. I, I had is I can't I can't be responsible for myself. It's okay. It's we'll we'll just use like AI or something to edit a cigar yeah. in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Great. <laughs> That'll be great. Don't 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 feel bad, guys. He could have called me. You know, the guy who you know made this cigar with him. I could have. <laughs> also. I think this is the first time we have a guest that's not smoking, a non-smoking guest. Jared, don't make him feel too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, bro, we're Damn. just gonna keep. This is like we're now we're hyper focusing. You're yeah. making me uh, feel nervous. Yeah, Wait, Alex. This is you know I'm very or... a very nervous person. <laughs> <laughs> this is don't, actually don't um the roast. Not smoking. <laughs> we don't need that going around. <laughs> It's okay. We're going to breeze past that. We're going to pretend like you're smoking. But, uh, okay, so we have these three cigars, and then I know there's a fourth one, which is the original. So, and I don't know if there's any other blends besides those four that are in the Sancho Panza line. We can talk more about that. But first, uh, hmm. let's, st let's start with... Look at, uh, look at oh, how he's prepared he is. He's got everything. Amazing. Should, should that to the yeah. camera again? Let's one, see those one, again. One of, one of us has to be... <laughs> Let's see those cigars again. There you go. Oh, yeah. Wow, beautiful. You look at it. <laughs> beautiful five pack. I'll so, overnight this five pack to you, Booth. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Amazon same day delivery. So, Justin, yes. tell me uh, how you got started on your cigar journey. Kind of give us a little recap of what got you into cigars and how you got to where you are right now. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I come from a family of tobacco farmers. But cigarette and chewing tobacco in North Carolina and Virginia. So I grew up going to tobacco auctions with my grandfather, you know, kind of seeing the family business. And uh, I always told myself growing up, I would have nothing to do with tobacco. Uh, that being said, funny how the world works, huh? 
And uh, so in college, I did an internship with a Cuban physician who was starting his own cigar brand out of Nicaragua. And at that time, I was like, well, I know everything there is to know about tobacco. Just didn't realize there was a huge difference between cigar tobacco and cigarette tobacco. So that was, let's see, goodness, that was 2009. So yeah, so 2009 was the start uh, of my little tobacco journey here. Um, did that for about six years, sold that company, and then went to go work for, as you pronounced correctly, Scandinavian Tobacco Group in 2015. And yeah, been doing this ever since. Very nice. It's a great story. And um, Matt, real quick, same thing, your, your origin story. My tobacco origin story? Yes, sir. So let me see. How could I make this short and sweet? I founded the Room 101 brand in 2003, making bespoke made accessories and jewelry in Los Angeles in the same studio that we work in to this day, 7th and Broadway. And my goal, my vision was to create what I, uh, what I felt was going to be the modern day Alfred Dunhill, a multi category lifestyle collective to include cigars and premium craft spirits and, and other ancillary items. Uh, in 2009, through a strategic partnership with some of the executives at Davidoff, uh, we launched Room 101 Cigars into market here in the United States. Um, they fancied our brand and they, they understand what it was that we were doing. So we partnered together and released a collaborative cigar and I was thrown into the premium tobacco world at that time, you know, and, uh, you know, everything from, you know, every, every level of the industry, uh, I became a student of from a factory level to, uh, the ground pounder level here in the States. Uh, in terms of sales and pulling product through uh, with event activations, both the standard fare of what existed at the time and things that we implemented ourselves um, to better uh, support our brand's unique needs, right? And uh, and then on the story goes from there. Very nice. And we've all had Room 101 cigars before. I'm sure not all of them, but we've had plenty from the Room 101 company in the past. A lot of older stuff. Some of the newer stuff as well. Um, but we're going to talk about the Sancho Panza, which um, is a rebrand of the company, correct? That's correct. It's, a, it's a reimagination, uh, you know, uh, of, of the traditional brand, yeah. Okay. And does that include uh, reblending as well or just simply the rebranding side of it? Yes. All of it. Okay. Beautiful. So tell us a bit about, um, first of all, I want to know more about the Extra Fuerte. Um, so kind of give us a, a rundown on that one because we're smoking that one the most. Yeah, so the Extra Fuerte is a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper uh, over Honduran and Nicaraguan binder fillers. We make it at our factory called Hatsa, which is in Donley, Honduras. Mm -hmm. So that actually is, uh, that blend has some pretty historic ties. Uh, it's something that a lot of people have used in different countries. And so what I did with Matt, we worked with our tobacco team there in Honduras to kind of recreate kind of a classic blend that's been made in the Dominican before and in Nicaragua and produced it in Honduras. And we actually, Matt, I believe we were working on this. Man, this was before we even collaborated. So this was back a couple of trips that we had to Honduras when we were making cigars for Matt. Prior to the acquisition, uh, and finally, when the Sancho Panza kind of initiative came out, we had the perfect cigar for the extra forte. So that's what you're smoking right now: medium, medium strength, full flavored, nothing that's too heavy on the palate. Has a nice crisp, clean finish. So yeah, so it's a new blend for the Sancho line, but uh, a blend that Matt and I know pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very smooth cigar. I was definitely a true medium. Um, it's hard to pick for me personally, if I prefer the double Maduro or the extra fuerte, they're just, they're both really, really good. Uh, in terms of my palate, at least I think the Maduro's got, um, still a very smooth finish, but it's just full of that rich flavor. It's something else. I mean, the idea with this, this entire series was to, uh, 
reimagine it in a way where we were going to continue to maintain, or at least the the hope, the aspiration was to maintain the assignment of brand loyalists to this brand as it evolved, while simultaneously capturing the attention of a, a younger generation of smoker, um, elevating the blends and presentation in a manner that optically and combustibly would resonate with this new breed of smoker to bring them more online or, or further in alignment with more modernized blends. A lot of the blends, for example, that we offer with Room 101 are twists on tradition. Uh, they're definitely more potent in composition than, say, uh, even our cigar blends of 15 years ago when we started. And I could say the same for uh, this this new chapter in Sancho Panza, Sancho Panza's life. Uh, that all all the all the blends and aesthetics are meant to be a little bit more modernized, but not in a way that would alienate mm -hmm. um, brand loyalists. No, that makes. Did sense. you guys ha did you guys have a chance to smoke some of the original Sancho Panzas back in the day? Um, I've yes, I've had a couple back in the day, um, but I it's not recent enough for me to really remember. Um, the experience wasn't like that memorable. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so just to give you some background. These brands that come out of Hatsa were brands that were created back in the eighties, back in the nineties with a little, with a different consumer in mind. A very traditional, very classic kind of blending, very, uh, tastes the same from the first puff to the last, uh, very mild to medium at best because we had a different, it was a different time, right? Yeah. People's tastes were different. People weren't eating, you know, Korean barbecue tacos with kimchi. You know, some, some of the IPAs and things that we do now. So to Matt's point, our goal was to go in and, and reimagine, re-blend, but kind of update these cigars while still having that connection and that tie to its historical background. And so I, th I think we did that justice. I mean, obviously it's got Matt's stylization and his fingerprint on it, which some of my old school Sancho Panza smokers weren't super crazy about, but... <laughs> I think if you smoke this and if you're able to get your hands on some of the older sanchos that are still out in the wild, you'll see that there's a deep connection between the two. It's just a more of a evolved blend to me, you know, today's today's smoker. Absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, but was this launched uh, in the last PCA or was it around for a little bit longer? We, we launched, launched that. These... When, yeah. It, no, it was 2022. Okay. 2022. Yeah. So been but around the extra, for a bit. The yeah. extra, the extra Cheeto came out, I believe, this year. At That's PCA. correct. Mm -hmm. And are there any other blends besides these four that we're talking about? There's a limited edition, okay, uh, that we developed with Oliva. I mean, it's it's uh, long since been sold through at this point, and also uh, a limited edition for the TAA also um, already sold out. But what you're what you guys have there is the is the evergreen core of this. Brand. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's very nice. How Zach, how are you enjoying this extra Cheeto? I'm actually liking this a lot. Um, I think it's more of a fuller body cigar than that. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I smoked that on the live last week. Um, I loved it. And yeah, like you said, it's a true medium. Um, and I felt like I could, you know, I, we smoke cigars all the time. So I felt like, to be honest with you, I could smoke it in the morning mm -hmm. with a coffee. Yeah. But that was kind of, it, it kind of reminded me of the Besa where I could smoke it all day and be fine. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? um, this I would love as like, I'm excited to try the double Maduro, but uh, this I would love as like a nighttime smoke, you know, get a nice bourbon with it um, and just sit down and relax outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been tasting great so far. Very nice. And what is... Um what would be like a good pairing recommendation for someone that's just trying to get into Sancho Panza um, for let's start with, you know, the extra forte and then go down the line with all the other ones. What do you think, Justin? Well, I was going to jump in, but Matt, you're the one that, that has a spirits company. So you're probably more of the expert on pairing than I am. I just, I just have a bunch of bottles of bourbon and tequila. So. You know, I appreciate you mentioning that. I appreciate you mentioning that. I would definitely pair all of your cigars with Room 101 Gin. Mm. You know, either on ice any day of the week. I love gin. I got to try that. Yeah. No, yes, you do. 
Yes, where's, you do. Where's the bottle? You can order it. You can order it direct to your door from caskers.com. There bottle. you go. Mm-hmm. For the people that straight into your door and straight into your fucking mouth. Yeah, if you, if you guys <laughs> yeah. appreciate Room One Hundred and One cigars, and you didn't know that this guy has liquor as well, you gotta check it out. We do all kinds of shit, man. People figure it out along the way, right? You know, um, so they either no. find you through the cigars, the jewelry, or the liquor. Yeah, man. So these cigars, I would highly recommend pairing with the Incredible Hulk. Okay. Now this is a fine blend of hypnotic and Hennessy, <laughs> served over ice. Right? <laughs> I'm listening. I'm, I'm digging it. Once you take this down, every cigar you will have will taste like a, a Padron Eighty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the magic elixir. <laughs> yes, yeah. all the cigars. I actually recommend two Incredible Hulks before smoking any of our cigars. It'd be the best cigars you've ever smoked in your life. Okay, if you're write not that drinking down. hypnotic with your cigars, then what are you doing? I mean, come on. Jared, are you writing this down? I am definitely <laughs> going to try this after the show. <laughs> you should. Trust me. I don't think I've heard or seen hypnotic in 20 years. <laughs> Bro, I see it all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the gold slogger oh yeah gold slogger man remember that that's a nice delightful evening and a half there <laughs> and a, half. <laughs> a, a nice uh, nice can of zima to go along with yeah uh, yeah these guys are probably too young to remember that though <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually 12, so it's <laughs> <laughs> no. We're actually so what 25, 28, and 30, right? 30, mm-hmm. 30, something, something, something around there. In the, 30, in 30 the, something in the 30s. We're a little, a little younger than you guys. Wow. They're in their prime for the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> it, takes some, it takes some youth. That's what it takes. <laughs> they don't get, and they've got they don't it. get the raging hangover after drinking it like we will. Oh man, <laughs> no, no, they'll still get it. Just a little less. Just, we'll be able to <laughs> There's no escaping that. So I'm, I, you guys asked this about us. I'm curious about you guys. I thought I knew any single person that had a cigar and a microphone, but uh, when we got introduced, you guys were new to me. So uh, yeah, yes. what's up with that? <laughs> Who are you guys? <laughs> oh me? Use. Oh, uh, yeah. So my name is Mark. Uh, I'm we already, we already did that. Let's go. Oh. Like, <laughs> So we actually started the Cigar Guys podcast. Hi, officially. Mark. <laughs> and uh, my problem is I'm addicted to cigars <laughs> and good whiskey. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a problem. But no, we officially launched the podcast in 2023. So we've been going for a year and a half now. Um, mm. YouTube, every audio platform. We actually started, believe it or not, with uh, this wonderful app called TikTok. So we basically got on TikTok and said, we need to bring the cigar community to TikTok a little bit more. Because at the time, in 2022, there yes. was a few people on there, but it wasn't No that, one crazy. Yeah, nothing yeah. crazy. So we did that. And then we actually launched a cigar later that year ourselves. It's called the Basis Cigar. So we're kind of doing a, the cigar media. We're also doing a little very small boutique brand as well. So we're kind of just throwing ourselves in the water there and yeah. diving deep. But. Then we're coming out with a liquor brand, and then we're <laughs> going to start doing jewelry too. Uh, nice. You know, nice. You know, we we learn from the best, I guess. <laughs> I like these guys. Justin canceled them immediately. Never take. Them. <laughs> Put the red check mark. Okay, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Oh, oh, you broke up there for a second. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. What? Anna? Uh, Well, I gotta go. So, <laughs> so you guys are doing. Oh my god! As if you didn't hate yourselves enough. Now you're in the cigar business. Exactly. Yeah. You're exactly yeah, yeah. What's, right. How's that treating you? Let's hear about that. Okay. So, I mean, we've had basis since mid 2022. And it's basically uh, Besa, so B E S A. It's an Albanian themed cigar. Uh, Besa. Yeah, so okay. Besa in Albanian it means oath and honor. Nice. Mm. So we highlighted it uh, around the story of Skanderbeg, who essentially led Albanians against the Ottoman Empire in the 1400s. So we put that historical aspect into it. And Skanderbeg is amongst Albanians. He's kind of like George Washington here. Like everyone knows who he is, or okay. everyone should know okay. who he is. I know okay. the younger generation is struggling with historical figures. So, 
but we've been um going at it for a couple of years we are we're based in orlando so we've kind of gone to uh pretty much all the cigar shops in orlando and secured as many as we can our mission now is to expand into the rest of florida and eventually the rest of the country but it's well look at that you actually yeah. did something fucking smart yeah. you sold your product locally to yourselves and establish a foothold and now you're looking to scale outward to the next geographical ring right yeah exactly that's smart thank you good for you I came up with that. Is idea. anybody else listening to these guys? <laughs> anybody hearing this? Okay. Yeah, One that's the way to do it. The next. Well, very good, gentlemen. Thank you. Know, you. There, there's, I'm there, happy to hear. There's a reason uh, Florida is like the number one maker of franchises is because of that. You know, we start at like one geog- geographical location, just move out. Uh, well, too, I mean, especially starting out in a brand like this, it's going to be nearly impossible to get out there to all those other states, especially, I mean, you guys know you have to have a presence in all these places uh, and for branding purposes to let people know about the brand, to get them to smoke the brand. I mean, I know you guys are traveling all over the place doing events and stuff like that. So it's, a, it's, it's a tough business. And I know you guys know, you know way more than we do and you've experienced way more than we do. If the cigar business was a person, I would mutilate their genitals. So they could <laughs> never do this to anyone else again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I second. Uh, so I second that statement. Is that fair, Justin? Or that is that is very fair. As soon as these guys said they made their own cigar, I was like, "Oh God, why would you do that?" Thank <laughs> God, help them. But it's that, but it's that <laughs> you guys are doing the right, the right. But thing. they did it the right way, right? Which right. is interesting. Right. I like right. to hear that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. too. A lot of us we still work uh, either part time or full time jobs on top of it. So I mean, we don't have the resources to just get on a plane and fly to every state there is. Mm. Plus, mm. I mean, we want to enjoy it as long as we possibly can, so maybe we don't throw ourselves completely into the fire, mm. kind of just, like, sneak our way in there. Yeah, and uh, one thing we've realized, too, is that every, you know, basically every major city has their own version of, you know, what I would say, like, Corona here in Orlando. You know, everyone goes mm-hmm. to Corona Cigars. Um, you know, you go to Kansas, you're going to go to Outlaw Cigars. You go to uh michigan you're gonna go to you know don christos or, or churchills you know churchills got five locations over there so those places won't even look at you unless you have a name for yourself so if we got a big name for ourselves in orlando that's when you know everyone travels for work and they're like oh i'm pretty sure i heard about them on my trip to orlando or from my trip to florida or whatever. somewhere on tiktok yeah somewhere on tiktok, well, TikTok the cigar guys whatever um and then that's when we found that they're more inclined to, you know, not just try your cigar, but try it in a sense that they're willing to take you on. Um, and that's kind of what we've been working with, I guess. Pretty much. It's a good, good way to put it. I think, I think so. So you guys are a, a young enterprising group of gentlemen of leisure that combust at plants. You also have this little internet show that you're doing here, which is nice. You seem like moderately organized. You have some microphones and such. <laughs> that dude's got a bitch and a headset on in the back, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you, man. So, you know, you can leverage what it is that you're doing. This is your core competency, representing yourselves, right? Yeah. You do this. Wh- where is this? This is uh, what type of place are you right now? This is like a, it's a, studio. It's a studio. panic yeah. room that you have? <laughs> <laughs> a, st- a studio? Yeah. Where, where is it? Believe it or not, it's actually, we're in a garage right now. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Okay. So, right, you reach a lot of people this way. And this doesn't cost you airfare, you know, uh, gasoline, food that you wouldn't have otherwise consumed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, crying yourself to sleep, sucking your thumb in a moderately to less than moderately priced budget hotel, wondering what the fuck you did with the last week of your life, right? So you can market yourselves and your products here effectively, right? You're well-nourished, well-rested. You got nothing to lose, man. Well, you I should know. be doing this. I, I feel like this is what he's telling See? us what he's doing. And he's saying, man, I wish I had a podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Yes, you. I do have a podcast. I have a podcast every time I go on someone else's podcast. There you go. I'm like a, a, <laughs> that was a good. squatter. You're like squatter. I come on and it's, <laughs> you know, it's my show. I don't have to produce it. I just show up. Exactly. Nice. Turn on the camera and you're good to go. We have to do all the work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? So, but that's, that's whatever. 
Are we done? Is there, is there something I, called I send you my invoice for consulting? Is, is that good? <laughs> Uh, there's something called podcasters rights. Uh, so mm. yeah, there's no invoice being sent to us. If yeah, we get it, it's going straight to junk. But I cast my pod, your pretty little mouth. How about that? Unbelievable podcasters rights. Unbelievable. I like that though. You're, like you're, that. you're the like one that's talking about that. squatting at a, on podcasts. So, yes. You know. If we were in California, we'd be screwed. Oh yeah. <laughs> you'd be stuck or on this France. podcast for two years. Yeah, but you'd have all the rights <laughs> to or, it. Or France. Where else, where else can you just show up and go into somebody's crib and live there and not, and not leave, right? <laughs> California and France. Where else? <laughs> I, there's other places, obviously. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure New York too. I'm yeah, sure they're yeah. in there. If they're pretty yeah. bad. Who yeah. heard about this party house by uh, LeBron James? We saw this on the news. Like some some party promoter I just moved in and that. was having like raves oh, at the crib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did hear about that. Yeah, but that does sound familiar. We missed the parties though. We found out too late. We found out when it was on the news. We're not cool enough. It's yeah, too late yeah. when it's on the news. Exactly. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's always who's next in time. charge of this stuff. <laughs> we have a general idea of who's <laughs> in charge of it. <laughs> uh, well, shit. Okay, tell me more. You want to know more stuff? Yes. Justin we, has so yes, much to we, say. We love stuff. <laughs> Am I pointing at him? That's where he is on my screen. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm there. I'm there. Uh, yeah. Where is enough. he? There we go. We could transition yeah. it either way. I'm Whatever way you sure want, we could transition it. Camera is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got sidetracked. We're here to talk about Sancho Panza, Scandinavian Tobacco, oh Room 101. God, we're still talking about that? Yeah, I'm <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Yeah. I kind of want to talk more about well, this Hulk thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Zach still thinks it's the superhero. And not <laughs> <laughs> Zach said, can I get his autograph? <laughs> so you know him personally? Or like... <laughs> So okay. Justin is a highly accomplished assailant in this industry. Yes, I want to hear more gotta, about Justin's story. You got to tap into that. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out where I can go find a bottle of hip- hypnotic now. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my goal Bro, for this evening. Any corner liquor store, it'll be there waiting. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what corners you're to going to, but <laughs> <laughs> me and uh, me and Matt can tell you guys a lot of, of a lot of what not to do and a lot of the things we've been through and learned the hard way. So, uh, so yeah, sounds like sounds like you guys are off to a little bit better start than uh, than we were. <laughs> yeah, that's actually why we had you on. We just wanted to learn from you guys <laughs> what to do, what to not do. <laughs> well, Matt's right. We do have a consultancy. So yeah, that's uh, correct. You know, Justin, uh, my <laughs> office manager is already preparing. Uh, I just want to see if we had to add any more line items. Uh, we'll we'll okay. see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but happy to help, right? Uh, I always, you know, even uh, my boy Brandon that started apostate, you know, he said, yeah. Hey, do you have any, you know, uh, advice for me? And I said, Yeah, don't fucking do this. Why would you do this to yourself? I feel like that's the number one piece of advice that we get. Yeah, don't do it. Just don't do it, bro. You know, but the it's funny neat. thing is, man. Oh, go ahead, just. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you the mere lifers at this point. You know how you see that meme where the guy's, like, digging through the tunnel, and right before he hits, like, the diamonds, he turns around? Me and Matt have, like, we're, we're halfway through a life sentence, so <laughs> it's, it's, like, our duty to tell people, just don't even get in. Don't even bother. Just, just don't even try. We'll send you cigars. It's okay. The diamonds are on the other side. Just keep going, guys. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. It'll be year 30, I mean, not year 20. If, if somebody had told Justin and myself the same thing when we started, we wouldn't listen to him either. No, you not know? at all. So there you go. Yeah. Exactly. That's why we're going to listen to I got to smoke your guys' stuff now. Yeah. Now I'm curious. Yeah. Who, uh, who, who's making it for you? So they're being made out of the Dominican Republic, and then uh, I'll tell you guys more later. <laughs> but right. I definitely, uh, we can definitely send out a package to you guys. So I'll- Cigar secrets. <laughs> I'll send you guys uh, some cigars after this. We'll love coordinate cigar that. Secrets. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys, you guys can either so you can tell us off the you know offline, or we can smoke it and then I'll tell you where you're making it. <laughs> oh, we can try that. Yeah, we can try that. <laughs> Let's do that. Ooh, that's Let's a do that. flex. That yeah. was a cigar flex. That was. It was. Ooh. If yeah, if you can, if you can do that, I'd be I'd be pretty impressed. Uh, yeah, so I'd that's what we're surprised. gonna do. We're not gonna tell you until you smoke it. That's not my first time, so that's fine. You know, I'm going to use that line from now on. Anytime I want free cigars, I'm going to tell people, hey, send me your cigar, and then I'll tell yes. where you made it. Yes. <laughs> that's a, 
that's a lot better than coming up going, hey, I'm not going to buy your cigar till I smoke it. So if you give me a free one, yeah. and I smoke it and I like it, then I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, the, the guys that ask for samples all the time. Yeah, yeah. sample. I promise I'll buy it. <laughs> I've been trying that with Padron for years. So that's <laughs> Mar- Mar- I think Mark was the only person oh, yeah. that we know that got sent free Padron cigars. Oh, so. yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> she actually story. got four. Yeah, they're great. Uh, I had a problem with my cigar, so I just emailed them. I just told him about it. And he's like, what's your number? I'll call you. And I gave him my number, and I was busy. So he emailed me. He's like, hey, try to call you. didn't pick up. And I was like, yeah, I just want to tell you about it. Like, don't – like, I'm not uh, – he told me he'd send me something free. I was like – I told him, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm not asking for anything for free. I'm just letting you know. There was, like, a hair in my cigar band. So I just wanted to tell him that. It wasn't even, like, a major problem. I just wanted him to know. Because it looked like a dog hair. It was, like, just, you know, white hair. Cute. And then, and then um, he's like, no, I'm going to send you something. Cute. Just give me your address. So I gave it to him, and he sent me the... I keep looking. <laughs> but consider yourself lucky. So they sent you free, <laughs> free Padrones. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, told, him, for you. I told him not to send it to me, like, three times in the email. So. <laughs> and a hat. I think you got a hat, too. Oh, right? I did get a hat. Yeah, that was the coolest part. No Is cape? No cape. No cape. No, no. no Next cape. time. Next time. Next time. Yeah. yeah. Look, I'll, I'll email him asking for a cape. <laughs> I have to remember that hair in the cigar band. Mm-hmm. That's a new one. Yeah. Now, now that we told everyone, they're gonna have a bunch of emails with like, "Oh, there's hair in Jesus my cigar." Christ, you guys just totally <laughs> fucked yourselves. You're never getting another Padron in your life. You're gonna be banned from buying them from stores. <laughs> well, it's funny because it was problem. weird. I want to make it clear, I had no part of this. I was just saying that I liked them. <laughs> Well, it's funny because it was weird. That's all. A couple months before that, we found a hair in our actual cigar. The hair was like sticking out. It was not a Padron, something else. Yeah, not a Padron, yeah. It's happened to me at least twice. It was some like no name, yeah. It was like rap. (laughs) (laughs) No name? (laughs) It's okay. No one knows what it is. Yeah, okay. It was a room 101. (laughs) The shit, I I have them put cubes in every 101st cigar. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's what gives it that little yeah. spice. Oh, I see. Oh, that's why I mix it up. I always thought it was 100 cigars, 101st. Yeah. Our, our brand is a little different, though. <laughs> makes yeah. sense, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, you guys got quiet. We started talking about pubes, and I feel like I canceled the conversation. Oh, we yeah. haven't even started talking about my fucking coffee table uh, book of uh, foot picks. Yeah, you have that. You know, I was saving that oh, for like one. I'm harvesting minutes. content from my <laughs> fine brand enthusiasts, fans alike. Thanks for asking. Th- this is it. So if you guys, if you, if you send him sales at room one You send him. Hey, uh, what's that? You got, if you send him your foot pictures, you send your free cigars. You heard her here. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> A lot of free cigars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, man. If if I actually sent free cigars to everyone that's submitted foot pics to me through the internet over the years, we'd be out of fucking cigars. <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to raise our inventory. It's, 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 it's actually disturbing how many pictures of feet Matt has in his home. And yeah. I've never seen most of them. I'm pretty and sure I, he's requesting them. They've been adorned with ramen noodles, pizza. Yeah, uh, I sent you that one today. That was nice. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, that, like, if that's not disturbing enough, usually on the other end of said foot is another guy with a cigar in his mouth and also the, the foot in his mouth, too. So That was, yeah, it's, that was uh, my next question. That was my <laughs> like I said, a little different. What can we say? Yeah, a little different, <laughs> you know. That's why I was hoping you'd uh, be smoking a cigar today because like, you put it in between your Big toe and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm less. Alex has some ideas. I'm less than flexible today. Oh, okay. You know, next yeah. time. R- rough I need, night I need last to work night. on my stretching. Oh. <laughs> so Matt, how how many of these categories? I'm trying to think of just ones I've seen. I've seen. Uh, <laughs> I've seen Do you see? toe it's infectious. In, in, in lotion. Uh, yes. I've seen. Oh God, I can't even mention that one. To say I've it. seen. Uh, and I've I've, I've, I've I've seen some cigars being caked up a little bit. Uh, so Matt, That's how many, right. How many how many categories? Do you have? I mean, I you know, man, I don't know if I'd say they're different categories. They're all you know intimate to to our needs as a brand. Mm-hmm. You know, as as a curator of experience. You know, yeah. I think this is although they may have different ways of articulating this uh, through expression. I, I feel that the, the message is the same. They're singing a, a unanimous and universal chorus, which is uh, love for Room 101. 
So how many emails? Did you, absurd mania. How many emails did you guys get after you came out with the room one one send nudes? <laughs> we did get some significant uh, <laughs> entries on that. I was pleased. I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't really know what to think. Uh, you know, what was going to happen. I just kind of uh, many things I do uh, are organic and impulsive. It, it, you may, uh, you know, may not be surprising. And, you know, uh, we did get some significant entries, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know if there are as many as I anticipated. I didn't really know what to expect. We have enough to have several different installments of the series, if that's what you're asking. Nice. So a good amount. Some would <laughs> actually have to be censored for uh, uh, commercialization. How did you get a uh, cigar prop to be on it? Uh, he just sent me one of the pics and I was like, bro, let me put that on a save. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that was it. That was really a Genesis moment for that project. I was like, wait, send nudes. What a great idea. That's cute. And so, you know, we, it started off with him. Yeah, that's cool. He was patient zero. I feel like it's pretty hard to impulsively start a whole new, like, cigar line. Like, oh, know. it's not it's, it's <laughs> not that difficult. <laughs> Just, bro, you need some bundles from CI, and you need a printer for bands and Instagram. And you can have a cigar brand. Fair enough. Wait, did I... Is that the no? secret? That, you just give the secret away? <laughs> I, is it a secret? Well, we, 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 were told, <laughs> is that a secret? we were told recently that there were 360 yeah, new brands year. every year. So, I mean, I guess it's really not that hard. <laughs> oh, so, so you're are the reason why. Is that what some it is? brands are actually newly created. Like house new models. companies, essentially. That was a stat that we learned that's, recently. So, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's, that's From someone else much. in the industry who is... Um, not not as not as not as big as you, of course, Matt. But you know, so <laughs> he's around. He's almost there. Three hundred and what? Three hundred and sixty new brands every year. It's almost I mean, higher than my annual erection count. It's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too many incredible hulks. You know, actually, what I, mean? I think that I think that information is is out there because uh, Cigar Coop did a list last year because we came out with sixty new brands last year. So, but yeah, so three sixty is not. Out of the realm of possibility, but they're saying new like companies. You, are you saying yeah. new companies or new brands? Yeah, new companies, like, like like a new brand. Oh, that's impossible. That's I mean, what I, I could thought, I could see it, but I mean, most of them would fail. You know, within no, a year. So, so like, so like when I say brand, like like if we come out with a you know, if me and Matt collaborate and create a new Status Deluxe or something, that's a brand. But as far as right. like companies with brands, I mean. Half of them does a thing every year called the brands that have come and gone. And I, yeah, I think it's usually in the 20s or, or oh, 30s. 360 would be, would be a lot. Is but that I mean, during the same year? Yeah. It's, it's, that's the brands that have come and gone. That's a cute idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot that aren't on their radar. But some guys that just started, uh, that probably got a license. They bought some cigars and they couldn't really sell any. And then they or they it. started and never got Actually, their license. We know that too. Yeah. 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 I was about to say the license would be a good indicator, but yeah, some people are starting to don't get licenses. Well, we knew a brand that got their whole line set up. They had like five different lines or yeah, something, but- and then they never got their tobacco license. <laughs> yeah, and they spent a lot of money on boxes. on Because, I mean, they, they had some pretty nice boxes. Um, their cigars, I mean, tasted cheap, so I don't, I don't think they spent a lot of money on those. But yeah, they came and went because no cigar shop would buy them because they only got a license. <laughs> Yeah, you said something of, very. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> you said something very interesting. You said they tasted cheap. Can you correct? That's very important. <laughs> that is important. You shouldn't make cigars that taste cheap. That's true. You gotta make them taste expensive. You gotta make them. Cheap you can go. Taste great. Well, you just need to make them taste good. Whether or not yeah. that means expensive or not is a whole nother thing. Right. They need to be rich of experience, not in price tag. Technically, right? Yeah. But. I think that I think that you know many times people uh, uh, don't distill things down to the most simple tones, right? And I think that you know a cigar can be painted you know to any level of prismatic complexity, but if it doesn't taste good, the fuck is the point, right? Yeah, yeah this this cigar tasted like they took uh, just dusty butt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, it, some it, reds. No, know. It, it honestly <laughs> tasted like they took you know just cigarette tobacco and just rolled it all together mm. it tasted like the, a ginormous cigarette <laughs> and like didn't change flavor didn't uh it was absolutely terrible i actually ended up saying it down but 
Yeah, it was not good. And who and who'd you say that was again? It was Room 101. <laughs> <laughs> I took that buzz, though. A giant SIG like that? Oh, man. Uh, but it was, I took no, it straight to the dome. It, it was it was light, but it was super light. It, like, I, I wasn't getting anything from it. No flavor. There was no body. Nothing. Hmm. Just just like coming dust. Yeah, exactly. Is what it was like. See? Just like a woman, you need flavor and you need body. You know what I mean? That's it. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, <laughs> I think we've covered uh, plenty uh, here. This is good. Uh, do you have <laughs> any more questions? Schedule of topics. <laughs> what well, you guys process? Oh, wait, did you... we cover Justin? We didn't even cover Justin yet. We've been oh, too busy bullshitting around. Yeah. yeah, I tried like three times, but <laughs> <laughs> this is this is much more entertaining. <laughs> so tell us, well, look, man. You guys want to know about the cigar game, right? And you want to know about the cigar? Did we cover the cigars enough? Did we do that? I just want to make sure we're satiating the the needs here. You know, but, is, I mean, is the squatter you know, running I'm, I'm the, the podcast? Responsible one who's here, who's running the podcast? The squatter or us? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, squatter's rights. <laughs> you can't avoid it. No, but he's we right. We talk though. about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. <laughs> what do you want to talk about now? He's just being considerate, Zach. Give him a break. No, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. It's nice <laughs> what you're doing here in your panic room. This is why he's not smoking. He didn't want to waste a cigar on this BS. <laughs> it's not. We already covered that. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Here, real quick. Let's talk about Justin. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Good idea. Mark, how was your day today? Now, <laughs> now, for, the, now for the boring segment of the, of the, the show. The people need to know. The people need to know. What is, who is Justin? What does he do? And why does he like cigars? Fuck yeah, bro. Uh, Go. Who, who, who's Justin? What is it? <laughs> so, I'm, I'm a cigar baker. Uh, three countries, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican, which I'm pretty sure I know where your cigars came from. Uh, and uh, Matt Boots uh, cohort here, apparently. So, that's that's that's, 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 that's the fun detail. <laughs> All the rest is just corporate minutia. So, not, not, not too exciting. <laughs> so, what do you guys process when you go to uh, create a new cigar bun? Hmm. Well, it depends. It depends, like from the ground up, or like a continued riff on something you've been working on. Uh, let's go with um, like this uh, this re. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Are I know what's happening there. Okay, <laughs> we're here. Are you back? I see you. Can you hear us? <laughs> there somebody, you are. Somebody, okay. somebody broke into the panic room. Apparently, yeah. That was the NSA. Uh, they were trying I'm, to get I'm the I'm panicking secrets. right now. Thank God we're in here. <laughs> in the Breaking panic out. room. Mm-hmm. So what? So did you hear that, or was that like uh, you know broken up by the breakup thing? There? No, we we didn't lose you. So just yeah, please continue. Yeah. So it really depends. You know, um, if I really like I really like sessions where you're working with capable and competent partners in the blending realm, and for me. I refer to a lot of those guys as translators. Like if they can translate my, you know, lustful wants and desires for different experiences from the combustion, they can translate this from their lifelong involvement in their craft Mm. to produce these results, you know. And some of my most fulfilling sessions have come from working with guys like Weber and Henderson Ventura in the Dominican and also AJ Fernandez in Nicaragua, you know. Um, I don't know if Justin... Yeah. Wants to pop in there? No, I mean it's it's kind of a loaded question, right? So it just depends on on what the vision is. So like if you take Sancho Panza, we knew the reblends had to come from Honduras because that's the origin story of Sancho Panza, the brand, right? And I told you guys before it was a classic blend, so we wanted to to modernize it, but not alienate its its kind of history and historical significance. If I also make cigars for a lot of other people. Um, outside of our, our company. So if I have a guy that comes to me and says, Hey, you know, for brand X, you know, but most of my stuff is it's based in Nicaragua, comes from this region. I'm really looking to expand to the Dominican Republic. Then I know the tobacco that best represents that country, right? From a flavor standpoint, from a combustion standpoint, to where when you smoke that cigar without a band, you know, that it has Dominican tobacco. So if that's the case, then that kind of guides me and through my process. And then from a from a kind of a ground level, a basic standpoint, sometimes I'm in Brazil 
and I smoke a fuma of some tobacco and I love it. I'm like, I'm going to make a cigar with this tobacco or I'm in Spain or Honduras. So it really, it really depends on, on what do you want the cigar to be? Like what project, what customer, uh, uh, what price point. So all those factors you kind of weigh in when it comes to that blending process. So you are a good translator. <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. I think Matt would Somewhat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Matt, would you consider him a good translator? You're track. You're tracking the conversation. I like this. I like people that pay attention. It's good. It's a healthy uh, trait. Yeah, I just threw it yeah, out. This there. is refreshing. Actually, <laughs> I'm yeah. learning a lot. That's I'm, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just listening yeah. to every third word. No, okay. <laughs> no, I get it. You could still piece it together. It's like <laughs> operable cliff notes. Now, you know, the other thing is okay. The amazing thing, one of my initial learning experiences, right? And this is very simplistic in form, but this illustrates the endless complexity uh, associated with this craft, okay? So uh, we had just finished completing the first Room 101 cigar blend, okay? Don Lee Honduras, this is 2008, okay? And uh, we began to work on the second project, which came out two years later. It was called Conjura, which translates to conspiracy in Spanish. And that blend was Rockstar. And I remember thinking, I need a stronger version of this. Let's just put a stronger wrapper leaf on the cigar, right? Because that makes sense. I mean, right? Mm-hmm. ABC level stuff. Like we make this stronger. We're going to turn the volume knob up on what I've been, what I've been learning is one of, uh, uh, one of the core influencers of the product's performance. And it was absolute horrid trash, <laughs> right? Because the tobaccos didn't behave well with each other. They didn't meld, marry, right? And so you multiply that by a thousand fold, by 10,000 fold. And these guys have to be a walking, living, breathing fucking encyclopedia of every fucking granular element that does or does not behave with one another from where, with what, what country, what neighborhood, what farm, the tobacco on one side of a dirt road from the other on the same fucking patch of land tastes completely different. Like they're from two different planets, yet they're five feet. You could stretch your arms out wider than the pathway that they're separated by. And they taste like they're from different planets, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, these guys have to be uh, a living encyclopedia of this stuff, right? And when you're talking about these guys, you mean the people that are actually in charge of blending the cigars? The people that that run these farms, that select materials that are are, our partners in blending. And and look, over the years, you you pick up on things, right? Like if you're awake, right? You know, Justin is actually a a champion at this shit, you know? Um, And and I've done okay over the years, but I definitely always rely on my translators. Mm -hmm. But it's fun because, you know, I think there's a, there's this bent magic of being, you know, an outsider and a from birth participant coming together, you know, it's like writing a song. You produce, the end result that you produce is very different than either one of you would have done separately or with other uh, partners in composition, right? You truly collaborate on the end result and you push each other outside of your preset personal boundaries, you know? Um, and this is why. Uh, I think a lot of some of the most uh, provocative and exceptional blends have been introduced in the last 15 years because the last 15 years has been a huge focus on boutique craft brands, a lot of outsiders that have been trying to create their own version of this thing that we all loved, right? The craft cigar. And so they're pushing uh, factories to create these things that are alien to what they normally would have created. Justin, back me up on this. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no it makes me nervous. You're, you're no, you're preaching. No, you're you're so, you're, you're, you're right? spot on. Yeah, and so I these agree. products are different, but not bad. I can't tell you when I started how many people I was told by that they're like, no, no, that just doesn't work like that. Those don't mix. That that's not going to work like that. And you know what, man? Nine out of ten times they were fucking right. <laughs> Shocking, right? But there would always be one time when that shit would fucking hit. And they would be very pleasantly surprised and inspired by that because that was innovative in terms of product composition, blend composition. And, uh, you know, who would have thought it? And then, or as my man, Justin would say, who would have thunk it? <laughs> I think you say stuff. I think you say, that. you know, so, 
but and, and now you have something that's genuinely different. Well, I think uh, b- based on what we've seen too, kind of like what you said, the last ten or fifteen years, there's been an explosion of in- innovation in the blending side of the cigar industry. A lot of new, unique blends have come out and inspired other people to make even more unique blends. So the market has definitely diversified a lot in terms of what you can get out of a cigar. At least that's what we've seen. I think it's the the best time. The market has dictated that too, because if you look back at the cigar boom, we were importing about the same amount of cigars then as we are today, right? But with the rise of, of Nicaraguan tobacco, with this kind of boutique boom, You've got more companies, more options, more people playing with tobacco than back in the boom when you had five or six companies. And then also people's profiles have changed, right? And and we listen to the market. And when the market says, hey, we want some more stronger full-bodied cigars, then that's what we do. So as Matt said, there's never been a better time to be a cigar smoker than right now. You have more options. We have tobacco coming from more places in the world than ever before. We have more unique blends than ever before. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a good time to be smoking for sure. Well, and I think over this period of time, at least since Justin and I started the business, because we started, I mean, basically at the same time, you know, there has never been, they've never taken their foot off the gas in terms of the pressure to elevate the game, to change the game, to innovate, right? That's always been, that's almost been like become a core genetic of the culture is to continue to to double down on elevating ourselves, right? In terms of the way we represent our brands aesthetically and the way that we produce our brands in terms of their composition by blend. Yeah, I mean, I think too, that's part of the reason why the cigar industry is on an uptick in, in terms of like consumers is because there's a lot of new avenues for consumers to get uh, basically hooked on cigars. There's a lot of options now that they can try and find something that they like. Whereas before, it's like if you smoked, you know, one of the five major cigars you could find at your local shop, you don't like any of them. It's like, ah, oh, okay, I'm not. Maybe this is not for me. But now there's so many options for people to try. There's bound to be something that can hit your palate right. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Well, and they also have more access to the people that are directly involved in uh, the production of these products through guys like yourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Panic Room Productions, <laughs> you know, like they're getting a, they're getting a set. Your, your audience is getting a sample uh, of Justin and myself and they're, and they're hopefully taking from it some learnings as to how we apply ourselves to our craft and how we apply ourselves to the, the curation of our branded experiences and our products, you know, um, and they should have the opportunity to understand with whom they're investing their dollars when they purchase a product. But they should also understand that there's a certain degree of care and focus that's being invested into these products. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody that didn't give a fuck wouldn't have shown up to your show. That's true. That's right. You make a good point, though. I you mean, know? we've had plenty of people reach out to us after we've had a guest like you guys on and say, oh, I want to try this. Or then they end up trying it or they just reach out to, you know, the guy personally and say, Hey, I tried this. It was really good. I think we had, um, for example, like Howie G on, uh, when we first started early on and that later that week, he texted me and said, Hey, this couple came into a shop while I was there and they bought my cigars. They said they saw them on your podcast and they really liked them. So it's definitely an avenue that works for, you know, for guys like you to share your experience and share your passion about it. And then that's kind of what can bring more consumers in when they see you guys talking about it and they know more about you that's an easier way to get people hooked on your stuff fucking a yeah absolutely yeah i would like my cigars the experience of smoking my cigars to be akin to you ever you ever buy a movie soundtrack back in the day like i, I bought the break in movie mm-hmm. soundtrack Right? Do do we have movie soundtracks anymore? Do yeah, we we just, we, just get the, we stream them, so you know we never had to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> but that means we never owned true them. Shape. Mm-hmm. True, that is true. We were like on, we, were, we were like growing up on the end of that. Like we grew up when streaming became a big thing. 
Yeah. So we were younger. Pirating, yeah, music yeah. Was oh, big. God. True, yeah. I had yeah, LimeWire. I'm pretty sure I get my computers, my parents' computer aids when I downloaded LimeWire. Yes, Wire. for yeah. sure. Yes. yes. Yeah. We actually, we Mark, Mark just pulled up a Facebook post from, what, 14 years ago? Yeah. Uh, and his, his post was, Zach's an idiot. He just downloaded a virus on our computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. So he, he wanted to nice. bring that back and point that out to me. So that's why we stream our music now but no you're absolutely right <laughs> with your point about you know buying quote unquote a movie soundtrack oh shit i forgot what i was talking about <laughs> yeah yeah it's, like i think i think everyone's brand at least at least when i started doing the boutique thing right it, it what everyone's brand looked like a direct reflection of the purveyor mm -hmm. They were an honest reflection and, and, uh, of that person and, and a tribute to what they were doing, you know? I and think, I think they yeah. could all be their individual soundtrack. Like mine, my brand would be like the soundtrack to getting your dick sucked behind a gas station. Pretty you much. Know, nice. Other people. That's a good experience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's basically, it would be guttural, viscous and real. Yeah. And oddly pleasurable, but also adrenalizing because you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we know what's going to happen. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. I mean, you know, give or take. There's some variables in there, Justin. What would the soundtrack of your 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 uh, mm. brand be? We're going to say Diesel because that is your brand. That is your brand. You 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 were the the new father of Diesel. Diesel would be Diesel would be like the soundtrack. I wouldn't say behind the gas station, but Diesel would be the soundtrack of like <laughs> an old two fifty pulling his like. <laughs> Harley Fat Bob up to the gas station, like cracking open a beer. That's probably that's probably uh, that's probably. And that dude easy. catches the room one on one guy. That's that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> also also exhilarating. <laughs> Is this the same gas station in the scenario, or? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I think it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the way Matt has his camera and his like godlike flow. It's like he's hovering over the top of us and we're looking up at him because he's speaking here. This is Nope. Looks like he's having some issues over there. Yeah, we yeah, we can't hear him. We can't hear Matt, you. We can't hear you, buddy. He probably got a phone call or something. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, that's his point. <laughs> tell him that, tell him to hang up. Get rid of him. Put your phone on do not disturb. <laughs> yeah, send him a voicemail. It's okay. But yeah, what would our soundtrack be? For our cigar, uh, specifically. The same thing as Matt's, but behind a Planned Parenthood. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. the song they played on that movie, Panic Room. I think, that, I think that's what you got. That should be our new <laughs> podcast theme song. <laughs> so you're, so uh, Diesel is your brand. That's your baby? Yeah, so I started Diesel back in 2017. Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, I make cigars for... Cohiba, Partigan, Smackanudo, a, a bunch of brands, but Diesel, uh, kind of like Broom 101 for Matt, Diesel was something that I worked on, the, the creative design, the packaging, uh, the messaging, uh, social media, blending. So, yeah, so Diesel, Diesel's near and dear to my, my heart, for sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear Bringing you. Bringing you back yeah. in now. Man, how do I put the fucking headphones on? Hold on. How do I do it? Why is it not doing? Sorry, gentlemen. It's okay. This is why we like to pre-record our podcast and not do them live. There's always something going on. Mm -hmm. Actually, we uh, had we had Saka on a couple weeks ago, and the power went out twice, three times actually, three times, yeah. three times actually. So <laughs> yeah, we had the cut. We had them cutting in and out the whole time, and uh, thankfully we we're already like 45 minutes in, so there it wasn't a big deal. All right, yeah, perfect. How, uh, there we go. Old, I think uh, that's. I think that's good. It was a good episode. People liked it too. We got a lot of great feedback. You know, you know how he is. He gives a lot of information. I mean, he he's a talker too, so he shares and shares, and pe people like that. A lot of the comments were like, or no, he said personally, he's like, he basically was like, yeah, sorry, I rambled and rambled, and then all the comments were like, no, we love when you ramble because that's when we get all the you know the juicy information. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've had very fine conversations with that man, of course. That have just been him talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that considered a conversation? <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Oh, no, no, not yeah. that. <laughs> no. Mm. Yeah. 
<laughs> but insightful nonetheless. No, it was a good episode. Of course. He's kind of like... What's next? Stop dropping stuff. Jeez. We were just talking about okay, Diesel. That- we were talking about Diesel. Um, Mark oh, was- yeah. Yeah. And our soundtrack. Mm. What's your soundtrack? So I guess Panic Room is for the podcast. It's a podcast soundtrack. <laughs> That's it. That's the there one. Go. We got we to gotta, go. gotta nail our uh, our soundtrack for a cigar down. I mean, it's Albanian themed, so maybe like some uh, like Albanian house music. Oh, yeah. It's, not, it's so. not super traditional, but it's still like got some essence of it. Yeah. Something you could herd some goats to or something. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. But like, you know, <laughs> party but, at the but same also, time. yeah, being a club, you know. Herding goats, club, herding goats bro, in a club. club. Goats. It's, it's, it's 24, bro. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, my <laughs> bad. It's disco. <laughs> <laughs> Albanian disco with goats. There we go. That's it. What's when are we going out? over? We got to go over and film some promo with the cigars. I think we should. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you, are you coming with us? Why not? There we go. It's a beautiful country. I've never been, bro. One day. But I, I'd go anywhere. Well, close to anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be fine there. Probably, you know. Just not California, I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We covered Diesel. So, Matt, let me ask you this. Matt and Justin, mm. actually. What are some other brands right now that you are involved in besides the ones we've already talked about? So, at the same time we launched Sancho Panza, or relaunched, we launched a brand called Los Tapas Deluxe, uh, which is, uh, Matt and I have done the same thing with that that we've done with Sancho, uh, repackaged, redesigned, reblended. Um, so, we've got, I believe, Matt, how many cigars have we come out with that one so far? Three, I think? Maybe three. There's three. There's three blends. Yeah. Well, yeah. and if you count the limited edition, there would be four. So like those, are, those, are, those are the two main ones that that were completely under me and Matt's control from uh, from start to finish. But we both, like I said, I I make cigars with El Titan de Bronze, which we've done in Cohiba, Part of this La Gloria. Uh, hmm. Matt's influenced uh, a lot of the cigars as well from uh, La Gloria Punch. I mean, you name it, we've kind of got our little tentacles, just about everything. That's good. I've sprinkled my molestial seasonings across many a brand <laughs> in my day. I'm sure they're very grateful for that too. Hey man. They cash checks off it, so <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah, if you're making if you're making us money, then by all means, mm-hmm. let's keep it going. I'm like the, the fairy of commerce. Mm. Well, I was going to say earlier, sprinkle too. On you too. We were talk- you were talking yeah, about how, um, thank you, I appreciate that. We were talking about yeah, well. um, how the brand is kind of like its own version of the purveyor. And you're definitely one of those guys where people hear Room 101 and they go, yeah, of course, Matt Booth. Like, we know Matt Booth. We see him. You know, we know how he is. He's just that guy. The fuck does that mean? You know what it means. <laughs> Justin, you heard that. How he is. Did you see how he said that? Did you hear that? What do you mean by that? How he explain. (laughs) You know what I mean. Is that like how Bill Clinton was? Is? I don't know. Is Is it? Is that how you wanted to be? I saw a meme. Who's under the 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 desk right now? He's the first one that came to mind. (laughs) I I actually saw a meme. I heard she has like a handbag line now. (laughs) (laughs) That's not surprising, actually. I saw a meme about her, that Hawk Tua girl. That's like, they're <laughs> oh, like, the oh, Mon- yeah. yeah. Well, no, they're like, Monica Lewinsky was a Hawk Tua girl at the time. <laughs> she was the, she was the original. She was the OG. Yeah. So, yeah. So when Matt comes out with his room 101 Hawk Tua cigar next <laughs> month, you guys will be like, oh, it makes sense. I can see that. I can see that. Happening. You're welcome. We, we called it here. You heard it here first, yeah. folks. We'll, uh, Spoiler we'll, alert. We'll, we'll fit yeah. that right. Right between breakfast in Portugal and uh, Red Rocket. <laughs> nice. Be- there we go. And then uh, we'll send you the bill for consulting for that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. keep an eye out. Reach it, out. It, it balances it out. It cancels Reach each other out. out. Thank you. <laughs> Never balances out. <on. laughs> yeah, we're, we're very we're very expensive. Yeah, we, we, we've already sent you like ten invoices, so we're yeah. waiting. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. 
Oh shit! They actually have my email. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have your cell phone too now. <laughs> Cut our email account, please. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm sorry. I was getting. Uh, I don't know. He's always cutting out like this entire episode. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Shady Wi-Fi. So yeah, we've covered so much. Yeah. Brands, brand architecture, blending. Justin's history, my history, your Fetishes. history. Of course. Uh, Disco. So from the Sancho Panza, since that's what we're smoking, what mm, what do you back f- to this again? Which one do you <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, I'll make it brief. I'll make it brief. Yeah. <laughs> what, we didn't uh, come on here to talk about cigars, clearly. <laughs> Tell me. Um, Tell us. What do you find yourself smoking the most from Sancho Panza? The new one. Cheeto. Okay. Oh, you like the original? Justin likes the original. Uh, it's a traditional. Double, Maduro, Double Maduro's been one I've smoked, but that actually, funny enough, that was the first cigar that premium cigar that I ever smoked. So I told you guys when I when I interned for this cigar company back in two thousand nine, my buddy was like, "Have you ever smoked a cigar before?" And I was like, "No." He's like, "Well, you probably should," and uh, handed me a Sancho Panza Double Maduro. So when Matt and I became the caretakers of that brand, it was kind of a full circle. Uh, moment for me to be able to go back and re-blend and repack is the first cigar that I'd ever smoked. Let's see, 11 years before that. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, pretty, pretty cool moment there. It's crazy how this industry just traps you. And then like 10 years later, you're like, wow, back full circle. Dude, and you guys, yeah, it's like the silence of the long, lambs. Yeah. They're trying to <laughs> the get out of the well. The longer you guys do this, you will see how incestuous and uh, how this industry does trap you. You see guys jumping from company to company. We've had guys that have gotten out of the industry for like three or four years and then get sucked back in. It's, uh, yeah. So, so be prepared. I mean, you're stuck now for life. That <laughs> now that you've started this in your own brand, yeah. you'll, you'll be having the same conversation with someone else 15 we're, years. From we're, now. we're part of the cult. <laughs> yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're on the inside now. It, w- it was really, uh, and is still an honor and a privilege to have been able to tamper with such a traditional brand. Mm-hmm. And give it a new lease on life. I think that was very exciting uh, for me. I know it was for Justin as well. Um, you know, also understanding that there was that element where it already had this very devout followership that we had to honor in whatever decisions we made to its modification. Um, and so, uh, you know, Sancho Panza was a, a great deal of people's first cigar. Hmm. Do you guys you know, know the Or they can remember Sancho their uncle Panza? or their father. Having that be their yeah. regular cigar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even in Cuba, Sancho was like the neighborhood cigar, right? So you had you had the Partigas factory that was making El Rey de Mundo, uh, Sancho Panza, and Sancho Panza was was more of an affordable like Bodega cigar. So a lot of people, when they would go get their bread and get their coffee, that was the cigar they could afford. Mm-hmm. So Sancho was was one of the, the most widely consumed uh, cigars of its time. That was actually one of my first Cuban cigars I ever had was a Sancho Panza, like back in the day. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, they don't they don't do a whole lot with it now. Um we actually have seen some stuff where I think Matt and I kind of they saw what we did and so there's been some new discussions about, you know, them doing something with it. Mm. But uh but yeah, so so it is it didn't get a lot of love for a long time, but it is definitely one of those uh, brands of historical significance for sure. No, that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, you guys have done a fantastic job on this, this rebranding, this reblending. Um, we've enjoyed all these cigars and, uh, we still have a couple left. So, uh, I think that the consumers that are watching this will definitely enjoy them too. I, I recommend them. I think we did a couple posts about them. Um, and then we're working on a review video as well. But I mean, y- people watching this will, learn plenty and hopefully go and try them because I, I think they're great cigars. And of course, oh, I mean, they're decent. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, they're not room one one, but you know, they're close enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so they're yeah. as good as they can be is what you're saying. I, I think, I think they're great. You're, you're the one that's good. that making me doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Never doubt. He's just he's just trying to gaslight us. I think that's what it is. Yeah, this whole this whole episode has been a gaslit. 
<laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> you show up, you do people's talky stuff <laughs> on the internet, and they shit in your lap, Justin. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? It's part of I the business. I can't believe we're going to let bootleg Jesus tell us with how to think. <laughs> this motherfucker. Bootleg <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Ascending from on high. <laughs> Cigar Jesus is what he meant to say. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It cut out. It I, I was going to say uh, gas station Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> gas station. I'll take gas station Jesus. I'll take that. I like that. I like that. I feel like I've seen that guy before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he looked we in the mirror, have. that sounds like a new cigar. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. go ahead and send you the invoice for that. Also, <laughs> Gas thanks, station, Buttercup. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so sassy; it's precious. <laughs> We're just matching the energy. I think <laughs> I like that. I like that. It's an energy reach around. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's as if my energy was going up inside your energy. <laughs> and then occasionally it swaps. I don't know. Very nice. You got to take turns. Very you got to switch nice. off. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, fuck it. That's it. Good. <laughs> there we go. I mean, what better way to end it than that right there? Yeah, yeah. actually. I think I've been everything. kicked out of many fine establishments. <laughs> Online and in the main space. We won't kick you out of this one. We'll, we will allow you to exit yourself. So <laughs> we don't want to, We don't want to go impromptu. We want you to satiate all of your knowledge thirst here. You, not many people get Justin Andrews on their show. Uh, well, we're very privileged. Yeah, should, <laughs> no, this has been great. This this has been great. The energy reach around. That's. Uh, that's what I'm taking away from this. Likewise, yeah, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note then, any final Boom. thoughts? Uh, anything you want to say last last second to the viewers, to the consumers? Besides buy well, Sancho Panza Room 101 <laughs> and Diesel. If I was to speak for both of us, if I may be so bold, <laughs> I would just like to say that we both greatly appreciate the time we appreciate you affording it to us other than anyone else in the tobacco world or otherwise. We're grateful for the platform and uh, we hope that your uh, viewership, listenership, what do you call them? What do you call them? They're viewers or listeners. It just depends on their preference. If they like <laughs> to watch. your viewers actually extracted something of value out of this. And, uh, you know, we're always around. Give us a shout. We're happy to participate. Absolutely. Great, man. Absolutely. So, yeah, thanks, guys. This has been great. A lot of fun. This is guy yeah, got serious on him. Way, <laughs> this is way more entertaining than than most of the stuff we do. So this is uh, no, I appreciate this that. Is great. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys for coming on. This has been great. Yeah, um, I do want a, a quick disclaimer: the cigar guys is not responsible for any gas station reach around. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, man! <laughs> Just highlighting this. But you are responsible. Edit, you can edit that out. Albanian post. rock music goats inside the nightclub. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Totally on you. We, we will take, take responsibility that. for yeah, that. I hundred percent will. In Michigan, once they started playing Albanian music, the goats walked in. That's it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no good energy, man. Good conversation. I wish you guys the best with everything you're doing. Reach out anytime, man. Likewise. I mean, Thank you so much. Yeah. 100% of your calls, at least 60% of the time. Okay. <laughs> that, that's better than I thought, honestly. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Cigar Guys. Definitely go check out Sancho Panza. Check out Diesel. Check out Room 101. These guys are doing some great stuff. We know you're going to like their cigars. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Comment. Make fun of these guys. We'll see you next time. (laughs) Take it easy. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.